Well, hello there. Welcome back to episode 28 of Ivatopia. That's me, by the way. Let's play of Tyranny or Tyranny. I always say the name wrong. Anyway, we've got a healing spell now to taunt him. We're going to have a conversation with her before we carry on. See what she's got to say. So, Hi. the Scarlet Chorus and Disfavored are at each other's throats. Yep. Can't say I didn't see that coming, but the Archons might have waited until one war was over before they started another. Yeah, probably wouldn't good. You think I made the right decision? That war doesn't interest me. Funny sentiment, considering you're in the center of it. Not that I'm judging. I'll say this much. Our time together is anything but dull. My blades are yours for as long as you'll have me. Noted, I have questions for you. What do you need? Tell me something about yourself. Yeah, if you insist. I'm a Scarlet Fury. That should raise some flags for you. It means that I'm good at killing, and more importantly, that I enjoy oh, it. Good. Need you. What I won't enjoy are the pleasures of funerary rites packed with weeping mourners. Someday I'll fall in battle, and then they'll roll me into a mass grave or heap me atop a shit-stained wagon. Hmm. One more anonymous, knife-riddled piece of meat. Okay. Until then... I plan to take whatever I can from life and have a little fun along the way. Tell me about your life before the chorus. Life? What life? As far as I'm concerned, I didn't exist before the chorus. There was some girl in a farm wearing my face and talking with my voice, but she wasn't me. Sometimes she would sneak out at night, take a scythe and have some fun with the livestock. Our shared interest began and ended there. Wow. When the Scarlet Chorus swept through my village on their long trek from the bastard city, that was when I finally woke up. I buried my old life, took red vengeance on everyone who wronged me, and found the freedom I could only dream was out there. Freedom! What do... What are your parents? My mother ran a successful farm, and I worked it for a number of years before I found the Chorus. She was a hard, bitter woman, acted like the world owed her something. She never talked about my father, though. I figured out a thing or two about him later. Later on, he was a merchant from the Northern Empire who took a liking to her, and she, she him. He stayed around only long enough to get what he wanted. But never mind him. My mother never had what you would call taste, so he, he, he couldn't have been terribly influential to me if he did stick around. Do you ever wish you could do things over and... And end up somewhere other than Karras' army. That's a naive. That's a a native. What? A naive question. No. Oh, okay. I, I missed the question part. As I've ever heard, Karras is everywhere. If you aren't in the Overlord's army, you belong trampled by it. Of course, I could have laboured on the family farm into my maturing years, married some dolt, and littered him a nursery of squealing piglets. Having my body torn to pieces by a smaller version of me sounds like fun. Wow, she's a masochist. Then one day, when I decided enough was enough, I'll slit my husband's throat over breakfast and run off to join the chorus anyway. My way saved a lot of time versus, versus smothers back the feathers in her hair. Smooth, sorry, back the feathers in her hair and shakes her head with a smile. You're a killer, better to stick with the chorus. I think you could have given that life a chance, you killer. At least you understand the chorus praises and rewards the things inside me that I wouldn't I would suppress in civilized company. Life is too sure to represent every desire right, especially if I have anything to say about it. How did you get conscripted? How did I? I think you have the wrong idea about me. The chorus didn't take me as a sobering maid. I strode into their camp and enlisted. Someone tossed me a dented blade. I lived through in in. That word again, basically the trials. Do like a here's a blade, fight me and you win, and she lived through it. Spent a week butchering my neighbours and moved on with my new kin. I didn't waste time with goodbyes. My mother had long since died, and the rest of my family were louses. Louses? Louses. The girl I used to be, even she knew that she was worth more than all of them combined. What is the significance of your feathers? Uh, loyalty too. We are getting awfully chummy, so I guess you deserve a story. Ah, great. Bedtime! Took me in after you finish, please. My mother <laughs> kept a messenger bird. Widow Beak. He was an angry old bastard. Spoiled from living there. High life. Squandered in my widow ever. No. Squawked in my window every single night. Picked my fingers while I fed him only the fattest, juiciest mice. When I left the farm to join the Scarlet Cross, I 
Wrong that ungrateful little wow. She got aggressive. Beepers, like a dish rag, plucked his feathers and gave his carcass to the mice. It felt like justice. She slides a crimson feather from her hair and spins it in her fingers. I also like how the feather catches the breeze, helps me keep my balance, especially when I'm moving fast. She slips the feather among the others and smoves it back. How does it keep a balance? That seems a bit weird. A little feather helps to keep a balance. Okay, whatever. No questions about your past. That suits me just fine. I'm not much for comparing family histories if I can avoid it. Tell me about your time with the Scarlet Chorus. The Scarlet oh, Chorus yourself, is you. mostly for madmen and peasants with rusty daggers, but it's also a little niche of freedom that I never had. Once I survived training and met my Scarlet Fury sisters, I saw a different side of the howling mob. You know, it's how we're speaking. I got my back to him, and it just got back to me, and he did too. <laughs> Tell me about your training. Who are your sisters? Who are the Scarlet Chorus leaders? Tell me about your training. For new recruits shoved to the front lines, training means surviving the first battle. Okay. Anything beyond that is for the fighters who show potential, whether as blade dancers or arcane hmm. madmen. There's nothing in the world like getting put through the paces as a Scarlet Fury. Every day is a test of your commitment and passion. Failure means death. The first few weeks were the hardest, but also the most rewarding. I earned my name, picked up some quality weapons, and met my sisters. Hmm, okay, so tell me about Scott Froris. You earned your name. Tell me about your weapon skills. Back to my question, okay. Do that one first. The elite fighters of the Scarlet Chorus. Your typical horde recruit fights with a rusty spoon and a chip on his shoulder, but the Scarlet Furies are, well, different. We focus our madness. We coordinate, we kill, we dance. It's like art. Imagine a sculpture that twisted in weird, beautiful angles, and then gutted you too fast for you to realize what was happening. Okay. Imagine a little bit of the Eldar, um... Oh, which were the ones, the, like, the dancing ones? The, um, the Banshees, isn't it? They like twist and twirl in mid-air with the swords and stuff. Sounds like Banshees from an Eldar, from Warhammer 40k. Okay, sounds wonderful. Do you either hear yourself when you talk? Tell me about the Scarlet Furies. You earned your name. Sounds wonderful. It is, as I remind myself all the time. The most important day of my life was when the voices of Narat recognized my potential and sent me to Scarlet Fury training. <laughs> you earned your name? If you think a simple farmer from the tears would name her child Verse, I said she'd visit my old village. Most of them were, were walking around with surnames like Barrel or Fish. Not the most creative bunch. She smirks and shakes her head. The chorus take you take your name away. Whoever you were before, you aren't that person anymore. Then you earn back a name through great deeds, usually murderous ones. That's why you see uh, quarrel men walking around with names like Stink Mouse or Face First. They're probably a good reason for it. Okay, Face First, I guess he, he ran, he tripped and he smacked his face in the ground. Stink Mouse, I don't really get that one. Stink mouse, stink mouse. Well, I don't really get that one. Oh, unless he's been running scared. And, you know, he hid in, like, manure or something, so stink mouse. You know, your little mouse, and you stink. The voices are near it gave me this name. When the Scarlet Cross runs howling at the battle, he doesn't hear war, he hears a sympathy. And when... I fight with blade or bow, he told me that my music stands out louder than anyone else's and contains too many parts to be easily defined. Huh, so verse. When you least suspect it, the icon of secrets can be downright charming. What's your real name? Fear. That question isn't worthy of either of us, but I'll entertain it out of pity. You already know me by my real name, it's verse. Are you looking for whatever? Arabic collection of letters and sounds my mother thought was appropriate when she didn't even know me. Then you're out of luck. I buried that name as long, <coughs> a long ago, long by my standards anyway. Tell me about your weapon skills. When I was just a kid, I didn't take, I didn't take me long to realize I was a natural. I could pick up a rusty kitchen knife and scour a rat from across the room. 
The Scarlet course gave me opportunities to further educate myself. My sisters were always a bit surprised by how quickly I took to different fighting styles. She frowns for a moment and then she shakes off whatever she wanted to say. Back to my question about Scarlet Chorus. What do you need to know? Well, you hesitate before you hesitated when you brought up your fighting styles. Why? Lucy, noticed that, did you? It's a matter that I'm not used to discussing, mostly because I don't know how. I mentioned before that I'm good at picking up different weapons and fighting techniques. The truth is, I'm better than good. I could flay a man so cleanly that I'll leave a single strip of skin behind. Yeah, I'd leave. I was wondering if it's like I wouldn't leave, but is I leave. He wouldn't even need to be tied down. Wow. <laughs> that was one of the first things I discovered about myself after joining Scarlet Curse. The, the voices on Nerat recognized it as in me. As well, which is why he singled me out for Scarlet Fury training. You tried that flaying trick before? Let's just say that when we ran out of canvas for pitching tents, the fifth eye handed me a knife and pointed me to the prison pens. She winks. My sisters were the masters of their fighting forms, but since they died, my style has changed. Almost like, like I can kill as they did. I could pick up a bow, a lance, anything really. I could tear someone to pieces with a weapon that I only watched my sisters use. I don't know what it could mean, and that worries me. Who are your sisters? Who were they would be more appropriate. Three whispers, red, was that Gisea and Seeking Sheaf. Best fighters I ever met. There wasn't a foe we couldn't take down together. Our fighting styles complemented perfectly. So we divided up the killing. Work like bards sharing a song. At least we used to. She presented a summon salute. Tell me about Free Whispers. And, uh, what happened to them? Tell me about Free Whispers. She was as calm as the surface of a pond. And light on her feet. More than one foe tripped and fell on their own blade due to Whisper's crafty footwork. Thus lets her gaze slip away from you as a feeling moment of sorrow steals her attention. Turn about Red Grizz. A one woman siege breaker, she would launch herself at her foes like a battering ram. Not even a disfavoured phallax could have withstone that dumb suicidal wrench. Wetch. Kara's eyes, but she was something to behold. Val slams her fist into her palm. Tell me about Seek and Seif. That girl could pass a spear through twelve rings from the far side of a battlefield. Carrington helped any foe who approached her marching single file. She made a game of spitting at as many soldiers as possible on the same javelin. <laughs> what happened to them? You was, we, we were scouting around Velen's well during the siege. Back when we only suspected the guard of organization in secret. My sisters and I came upon a group of them. Carrington's... Knows maybe they found us. No one said anything. We drew iron and bronze. That was when everything went wrong. I was supposed to take point and occupy the guard with a dance of blade work. Something disorienting. While my sisters picked their marks, I hesitated. I lost my nerve. Oh, so you could cost them the lives. Instead of rushing the oathbreakers, I froze with my weapon drawn. My sisters fought on without me, but they were off balance. Like whatever I had was catching. Maybe some kind of spell got to you all then. They, they died, I lived, my sisters were relying on me to lead the dance and I failed them. It's understandable, caution st stayed your, your hand. Your actions were inexcusable for a fire of your status. That one. Caution, save your caution for this favoured. If we showed caution, uh, could we have taken the, the, bastards, the, the beeper city as the gates of judgement? Could we have conquered the tears with anything less than our blood boiling over with rage? Song of battle ripping our lungs. Hesitation is not a rot. It is unbecoming of any course member and unheard of a scarlet fury. I would cut it from my body and catalyze the wound if, if only I knew its source. She grimaces once more and turns inward contemplating. Any thoughts on the topic, or are we just here to open old wounds? Idea why you lost your nerve, Bao? I had more questions about your sisters. Back to my question, nerve. I wish I had an explanation. For the first time, I lost the dance. The song of murder drew silent. Instead, there was only rigid organization control. This, that sounds like the security of a phallax to me. You should practice a more ordinary form of combat if it suits you so well. Even if the Scarlet Chorus fought information, 
It wouldn't be anything like your hideous shield wall. She looks at him in disgust. I had more questions about your sisters. Questions about Scarlet, okay. What do you need to know? What are the Scarlet Crush leaders? You already met the voice of Narad and apparently fought enough of him to put your trust in Scarlet Chorus. The rest are all offshoot of the voices, like the Fifth Eye. Once you get down to the ranks and file, the Scarlet Crows organize around a monthly bunch of gang bosses who call the shots. What do you want to know? Tell me about the voices of Narrant. He's a madman, but that never stopped me from following his orders. Even in a legion of cutthroats as the Chorus, you know better than to get on the voices' bad side. People who cross him, or just people he meets, don't tend to survive their experience. If he ever seems disorganized or lost, it's because he's channeling one of the personalities he devoured over the years. His mannerisms shift over to someone else, someone who's probably long since dead. Better to die than become part of the voices. What makes the voice of Narcos so powerful? He is the Archon of Secrets, and he didn't earn that title lightly. People say that he knows more than every sage in the tears combined, and that he can think a thousand steps ahead of other archives. It would be putting it lightly to say he never alone under that disapproving helmet of his. It would be putting it lightly to say he's never alone. If you make secrets your business, I guess having people constantly whisper in your ear is a good thing. I usually want people to shut up, but to each their own. Tell me about the fifth eye. A walking nightmare that one I couldn't begin to guess who lives under that armor and speaks with that ready, reedy voice. I was reading it's ready on your A, but it's ready, but I'll tell you what I know. When, you're, when your world is built on secrets, it pays to have a few extra eyes. The voices of Nirit has eyes in abundance. Some that he keeps close and others that he sends out in the wilderness. Whoever the fifth eye was before he came into the Arkan service now, he's just a half-mad jabbering speech hole, a bodily function. In other words, an eye. Wait, there's an eye. Uh, Niran's eyes are, pe are people. How many eyes does the Arkham Secrets have? Maybe they used to be people, whatever they were, their eyes now. So his eyes at least be people, I can remember. Folks like to whisper that the voice of Niran takes his servants and c cuts. Yeah, cuts. I was, I was going to read it. Cuts, it's cuts. Out all the extra parts that they don't need. She makes a quick s snipping gesture with her fingers. I once had the voices and the fifth eye in a tent together. The voices kept screaming redundancies, redundancies every time another gout of blood would spray on the canvas walls. I can't even guess what he was cutting at, cutting out. How many eyes does that have? The number keeps changing, either because it grows or because rumours don't mean the sheer word. 3719, some even say that all of, all of us are eyes and we don't even know it. She shakes her head. It, in thoughtful disapproval. It's one of those questions that drives you mad if you allow yourself to think about it for too long. Hey, you could be one of the twins' eyes, bet you never thought of that. Back to my other questions. Go on. Tell me about the gang bosses. A boss is anyone who can rally enough support to kill the previous boss. They cling to command until someone gets wise and stabs them in the back. Tip cap leads to filthy lambs. Locks leads the rusted harps. Sharp used to lead their bone boys, couldn't say where he ended up after they broke his legs. Water wheel orders around their hairy hunters. Holes for the sheer word leads the lazy malicans. The scuffy queen, scurvy queen, fingers food and wild cash collectively lead the ladies of Prevent straggling. I'm forgetting at least a dozen more. I've even led a gang or two in my day. They never survive very long so no point in getting attached. You led a gang? Don't act so surprised. I can crack a whip better than any of those daisies at the disfavoured labour camp. Are you going to put in? No? But I was never that interested in power struggle of those grunts and scabs in the middle. I wanted to stand on the top like an apex predator. Here I am. So when I got tired of a gang, I disbanded and let the other bosses fight over the new recruits. That must amuse that that much amused me. At least some of my old mates are still alive and hanging around whenever they ended up. Back to my question about Scarlet's. Let me ask you about something else. What do you need to know? Thoughts about your combat abilities. Do you now? Call me intrigued. 
You already know that I memorize the moves of my Scarlet Fury sisters. Yep. If it seems like a total mystery to me, I don't know how you could have arrived at any conclusions, but I'm open to ideas. Hmm. I can go with forget I said anything back to my previous question. I think you're just a damn good fighter. Did you take their fighting moves or the memory of their fighting moves? Remi remind you of anyone? Taz, remind me of the voices. I hope I didn't hear you say that, Fate Binder, because the implication is more than either of us is prepared to handle. The voices of Narat is a monster. We both know that Teratus has never seen a creature more despicable than him. Never mind that he's kind of my boss. Think about it, he absorbs the mind. Uh, through power you can't begin to understand, the voice of Nerkud steals the minds and knowledge of his victim. You know this happens often during the campaign against the Tears. What he gains from the ability beyond this is apparent madness is anyone's guess. Uh, you know better than to ask him about it directly. Think about it, he absorbs minds of victims. I'm not comparing you to voices, only this talent to his hips. That one. Well, I don't want to fucking think about wow, it. Wow, she commented. Didn't you annoyed. consider for a second that the thought had occurred to me already? I've traveled with the chorus for years. I've seen what the voices can do, and it scares me, all right? The idea that everything I am could be reduced to... to that. If I had that kind of power, if I could become like him, I don't know how I could live with myself. I'd rather drown myself in a camp latrine. See, that's it. I've got a heart, apparently. You don't have to become like him, just be selective. The voices isn't so bad. Give it a chance. I'm sure he had the same idea when he got started. But you know what they say about power? It's usually wielded by assholes. <laughs> My sisters died. Oh, you should have seen us. We were amazing together. I didn't mean to take away what made them special, but I did it all the same. And let me tell you, it felt terrible. Okay. If I lived a century, I might never figure out how to make that happen again. And more importantly, I don't want to. Wow, with that, we'll end episode right here. So last round of good stuff to you next week. We'll finish the conversation with her. Wow. Quite intense with her, isn't it? Bye for now, people. Bye-bye.